childhood trauma may be a predisposing factor in addictions, more study is required. And I'm thinking, what planet are these people living on? Are they not familiar with the hundreds of studies that have shown a relationship between trauma and addiction? Do they not know the adverse childhood, uh, childhood experience studies? Are they not aware of the data on brain development and trauma? I mean, what intellectual labyrinth have they been lost in for the last 50 years for them to come up with a study that says childhood trauma may be related to addictions? Maybe, and then more studies required. So what I'm saying is that the very need for research and intellectualization is actually a, a factor of denial. It represents denial. And that denial really is really about people's own emotional pain. So the block is that this stuff is painful and therefore we dare not look at it in ourselves and therefore we don't open it, don't open to its existence in others. And then we have to look for all kinds of other reasons. If, if you deny pain, owing to early experience and early loss and early trauma, then the world becomes very complicated and justify all kinds of complicated explanations. Yet if we see that a child has certain needs, and if you meet those needs, that child will be just fine. And if you don't, he'll have to adapt somehow. And those adaptations are the basis of dysfunction later on. That's really simple. They call it simplistic. It's not simplistic, it's simple. The world is really very simple. We make it complicated because of our denial. Meanwhile, this is my last show ever. I'm tired, folks. Tired of spreading the news. Folks, it's time to evolve ideas. That's all we're left with. There's going to be no more thumbs coming down the pipe. It ain't happening. Sure, there will be aberrations in evolution. People who take steroids, those fucking guys who pump up, people who do punctures and, you know, tattoo. There's going to be different aberrations. But the true evolution is to evolve ideas. What do I mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Well, well, for instance, how about this? Why is the drug czar of this country? First of all, why is there a drug czar? Forget that. Why is the drug czar of this country a cop? Why isn't he instead someone who's been through recovery, who has had an alcohol and or drug addiction and overcome it and offer instead hope and compassion rather than condemnation and jail sentences to drug abusers? See, that would be evolving an idea. See, drug abusers, folks, are not criminals. They're sick. And putting sick people in jail, does that make sense? really does. And the fact they wonder why kids do drugs, well, you know, the reason is, A, they feel good, but B, the hypocrisy of watching beer push down our fucking throats, every commercial with, you know, women basically almost the balls in their quad at this point. Beer. Pop that beer, honey. Boy, it tastes good, makes you look good, feel good, too. The fact that alcoholism is totally a fucking scourge in this country and responsible for every fucking broken home every fucking beaten child, every fucking beaten wife. We overlook that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Cigarettes, death, you know, nothing. Pot, meanwhile, a drug that kills no one. Uh, and let's put it in a time frame. Ever. Pot is against the law. Now, does that make sense? Do you think your child is supposed to accept that? Or is he supposed to look at you and go, you hypocritical motherfucker, I'm shooting heroin in the vein under my cock because I hate your fucking lying society and your lie that you fucking live. That's why your kids do drugs. Okay? Because they see that we're not growing up and taking responsibility and we're fucking liars, you see. And kids sense that immediately. They have that instinct. Anyway, if you want a better world, legalize pot. That's my point. If you want to end the deficit, legalize pot. Pot is a better drug than alcohol, and I'll prove it to you. You're at a ball game. You're at a concert. Someone's really violent, aggressive, and obnoxious. Are they drunk, or are they smoking pot?
Wow, we all know the truth. I've never seen people in pot get in a fight because it's fucking impossible. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, what? End of argument. <laughs> Say you get in a car accident and you've been smoking pot. You're only going four miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, we hit something. <laughs> I got to open the garage door, dude. It's okay, I forgot we were going in reverse. At least no one was hurt. Garage door has to be replaced. Boom! A job has been created. That'd be good. I got new stuff, Mr. Kreskin. I'm just building the case. See how confident you are in a minute. We ain't even pulled our shoots yet. They lie about marijuana. Marijuana makes you unmotivated lie. When you're high, you can do everything you normally do just as well. You just realize it's not worth the fucking effort. <laughs> There's a difference. Sure, I can get up at dawn, get in traffic, go to a job I hate that does not inspire me creatively whatsoever for the rest of my life. Sure, I could do that. Or, I can sleep till noon, get up and learn how to play the sitar. What is it, one string? How fucking hard is that? In harmony with the crickets. Here comes the mothership. <laughs> we shall rock on! The universe is our playground! That's how you evolve ideas, okay? There's a new extensive HuffPost YouGov poll uh, about the issue of drug legalization that just came out. And as expected, a majority of Americans want legal marijuana. Now, according to this poll, it's 51%, but other polls have been even higher. I mean, I saw one, I think 58% was one. But here's the downside of the poll. When people were asked about other drugs, if they should be legalized, let the hypocrisy begin. So what you see here is marijuana, 51%. Uh, want it to be legal, and then it just drops off tremendously for the other drugs. Now, they didn't uh, mention all drugs. In fact, they left out a lot of big ones. I mean, I guess they left them out because they're legal for prescription use, but like Valium, Xanax, Klonopin, stuff like that, those are off the list, and they didn't ask about, um, about uh, like Oxy or stuff like that. They have heroin on there, but not like the pill form and the lighter form, the pharmaceutical grade stuff. But uh, marijuana, 51%, only one that people want legalized. Ibogaine, which is a, a, I think it's a powerful hallucinogen. And that stuff actually, it has a good track record for ending addiction to other drugs, which is really interesting. Only 17% want that legalized. I'm surprised 17% even know what that is. Uh, peyote, 15%. That's, of course, the, you know, what's traditionally viewed as the old school Native American drug. Uh, cocaine, only 11% want it legalized. Ayahuasca, another uh, hallucinogen uh, connected to a lot of, like, shaman rituals. 9% want that legalized. A lot of people talk about ayahuasca, like, changing their life and being this powerful thing. And by the way, a lot of these drugs I should mention, that's not even addictive. Like, these aren't even addictive. They're just hallucinogens that can, like, change your perspective and your view on things that really try to take you into, like, another dimension. MDMA, only 9% want that legalized. Crack, only 9%. Heroin, 9%. Methamphetamine, 8%. LSD, 8%. So what I 
really dislike about this poll is that apparently people don't think they're being hypocrites when they are being hypocrites. You know? And sometimes when I bring this up, like a, a good listener of the show, member of the show, uh, we debated this on air once, and he said, no, look, I think you're doing a false equivalence when you say that, you know, those drugs are the same or that it's somehow hypocritical if you're in favor of legalizing one and not another. But my response to that is, no, I'm not doing false equivalence. I understand full well that drugs have completely different effects. Some are up, some are uppers, some are downers, some are hallucinogens, some are more powerful, some are less powerful, some are addictive, some aren't. So I understand there's a wide variety and spectrum of different effects that drugs can have with different kinds of highs and lows. But that doesn't mean that the legal status should be different. You can understand that they have different effects and have different qualities, but still say the legal status should be the same. And the reality is, look, I think it's a matter of principle. I think that, uh, you know, you have a right to put in your body whatever you want to put in your body as long as you're not hurting anybody else. Even if you're talking about, I want to chug a, a gallon of Clorox and commit suicide that way. Okay, I'm going to try, try to talk you out of it. I'm going to, you know, try to tell you why life is worth living and why you shouldn't do it, and I'll help you. But if at the end of the day you choose to do it, okay, you're 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 gonna do it. And what's the you know what what should we do instead of that? Like that's my question to people. What do you want to do? Let's say the person chugs the Clorox and somehow survives because they're immediately rushed to the hospital and they somehow can get it out of their system. Uh, what happened? What do you want? Put that person in jail? Is that what you want to do? Is that what you want? You want to put them in jail? You know, but for whatever reason, when we talk about a substance that changes your consciousness, it's like all of a sudden people are like, oh no no, no. yeah, you should go to jail for that one. It drives me crazy, man, and look, I understand it's a debatable issue whether or not to decriminalize drugs or legalize drugs. I think that that's like the spectrum where uh, the sane people live. Outside of that, I think you're kind of getting kooky. The idea that, no, no, it is a criminal offense to put something in your system or sell something. I mean, these are, we're talking about people doing a nonviolent crime here. The idea of a nonviolent crime, like, if there's not substantive hurt happening, is it really a crime? Should we really lock people up and take away their freedom for it? And then also there's the, the massive aspect of this that we haven't spoke about yet, which is the worst drugs of all. See, some people would respond to what I'm saying by mentioning, well, what do you want to legalize even the worst of the worst of drugs? Like, you want people to die? Just like crystal meth or crocodile or bath salts and stuff like that that really is bad for you? Like, the people who take crocodile, for example, um, they die on average within a year of when they start taking it. It just, it, your body, it's like necrosis from inside out, like your skin rots off. And my response to them is the reality that those drugs wouldn't exist if the other drugs were legal! What do you think crystal meth is? It's a cheap attempt to get an upper kind of high that cocaine would provide, but cocaine is too expensive and it's not in the Midwest. So what do they do? They grab fucking nail polish remover and diesel fuel and mix it with this shit and that shit, and then they smoke it at the end and it's crystal meth and it's worse. Eve, the same thing, crocodile, that's a, that's a cheaper heroin. People buy that when they can't afford heroin or they can't afford pills, pharmaceutical grade pills. And of course, what's healthier? Of course it's healthier if it's pharmaceutical grade and they can measure out the proper dose and stuff like that. So the reason why these horrible problems exist is because the drug is illegal. Same thing with violent crime. There wouldn't be violent crime associated with drugs if they were legal, you know? I mean, think about it. Back during Prohibition in the U.S., when alcohol was illegal, what happened? People were dying over alcohol. You know, if there was a problem, you would solve it with the Mafia shooting Tommy guns at your face. Why? Because you can't go to, to, to sue somebody and go to court over a dispute for whatever reason about alcohol. And also when you produce the drug. During Prohibition, people would die from a bad batch of alcohol. You know what that means? They cut it with something toxic and they weren't able to filter it out properly and you died. You know, and if, when it's legal, no, you don't hear about that. Well, because it doesn't fucking happen anymore. Now there's regulation of alcohol, so they can't, don't cut it with disgusting shit. There's rules and regulations you have to follow. Same thing goes with prostitution, by the way. You know, prostitution is legal just outside of Las Vegas. They don't have any STDs. There's never been an STD transferred because they get tested weekly or monthly or whatever it is, and they make sure everybody's clean. But if you go to a place where it's illegal, Hunts Point, for example, they're spreading disease all over the place because it's illegal, so it's on the black market, and criminals deal with it, and it's unregulated. So the problem is because it's illegal. If you legalize and you tax and you regulate, 
uh, you make a safe environment. And also, the, the dosage is a big thing. You know, if you're buying drugs on the black market and the, the society you live in looks down upon drug usage, you don't know what the fuck you're doing usually. You haven't been educated. You don't know the right amount to take. And that goes for every drug, even marijuana. You don't know. You fucking smoke enough, you know, where you get so high that your mind feels like it's on Jupiter. But you, if you were able to learn about it because it was openly discussed in society and it was just an everyday thing, people would go, no, 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 it's cool. All you got to just take, all you need, oh, you're just starting? Take just one hit or two hits. You're going to feel it, trust me. You know, actually, you don't get high the first few times. I didn't, but you know what I mean. The first time you actually get high, third time, fourth time, whatever happens to be. Just take one hit, dude. You're going to feel it. So education is key. Legalize, tax, regulate. I mean, that would decrease crime. That would even decrease, that could decrease actual usage, too. How's that for counterintuitive? In Portugal, they decriminalized all drugs. The usage rates dropped. The conservatives are like, what the fuck just happened? That doesn't make sense. Because what's the talking point here? Well, obviously, if you legalize drugs, everybody's going to use them. Really, dipshit? No, apparently it dropped. See, I would have guessed that it would just stay about the same. I don't think anybody who's not doing heroin today is all of a sudden going to say, I'm going to try heroin because it's legal, you know? But, and final thing I'll say, man, here's what we need to get through our heads, that people who take the overwhelming majority of drugs, okay? Yes, there are a few that are really dangerous, but the people who take the overwhelming majority of drugs, it's, they're moderate users, you know? Like that old school reefer madness mentality where they said with weed is going to destroy your life and you'll be sucking dicks behind a dumpster next to an Arby's when you're 18 if you start smoking pot when you're young. Like that was all fake and we now know that it was it's bullshit, it's propaganda, it's not real, right? But that's also largely true of other drugs. It's a game, it's a blind game. And you think that, I mean, I read, I've read all your books. I read uh, Supernatural as well, which is one of my, my more favorite, or more, uh, what I found more fascinating, because it, you really stepped out on some serious limbs on that one. Yeah, you know, I kind of did, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you come from the journey from being a, a journalist who was covering this thing in Ethiopia mm -hmm. to Supernatural, which insinuates that humanity has probably learned a, a good deal of what we are and what we become because of psychedelic drugs. I, I believe that's absolutely the case, and and I think that uh, with the c current uh, demonization of psychedelic drugs in in our society, it's a huge mistake. How been. much resistance have you felt from that book? Well, I, I've had an enormous amount of resistance to it um, because uh, we have had um, a mind programming exercise called the War on Drugs for the last 40 years. Uh, which has been designed to create an internal enemy in our societies and convince people that there are these evil, wicked groups who are doing these terrible, sinful things, smoking these drugs and doing, doing this and that, and this very dark image has been created around it, and people get very upset irrationally about this, uh, about this whole issue. And actually what's been forgotten in, uh, in all of this, and for, for me has become, I, I regard it as an extremely important issue, uh, is that when the state um, sends us to prison uh, for essentially exploring our own consciousness. Uh, this is a grotesque abuse of human rights. It's a, it's a fundamental wrong. If, if I, as an adult, am not you know, sovereign over my own consciousness, then I'm absolutely not sovereign over anything. I can't claim any kind of freedom at all. And, and, and what has happened over the last 40 or 50 years under the disguise of the war on drugs is that, uh, that we have been persuaded to hand over the keys of our consciousness to the state. The most precious, the most intimate, the most sapient part of ourselves, the state now has the keys. And furthermore, they've persuaded us that that's in our interests. This is a very dangerous situation. Have you ever, there was a, an article that was recently published of, about um, people and creativity and that, you know, everyone says they love creative ideas, but the truth is, amongst non-creative people, creative ideas make them confrontational, oh, make yeah. them upset, make them defensive. Mm -hmm. when, when you start talking about experiences like psychedelic experiences, one of the things that always freaks me out is the people's inability to even consider that there's a difference between a psychedelic experience on drugs and a drug that's going to ruin your life. Yeah, it's, it's, they're not even interested in considering that possibility. There's two different... It's like the same thing. It's like someone resisting... Definitely. And that, again, that's the result. Let's, let's remember that, that, that funded with our money, 
our taxpayers' money, there has been 40 years of programming, more than 40 years on this subject, to make us all develop a kind of aversion, of a fear, a hatred, a, 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 a horror yeah. of, 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 of drugs. And this is, it's just fundamentally wrong in so, in so many ways. Look, quite a number of illegal drugs are actually really bad and really dangerous and they, they will totally fuck you up in all kinds of, in all kinds of ways. But I believe that the sovereignty of the adult over his or her own body and his or her own mind trumps everything else. Sure. And we must have the right to make our mistakes. Yes. You know, we already have laws in our society for punishing bad behavior. If somebody on drugs goes out and gets in somebody else's face and causes them trouble, we already have laws to deal with that. We don't need new laws that control our consciousness and rigidly place it in a prison and actually place us in prison. So, if we such an important point, what you just said, that we already have laws to keep people from doing bad things. Yes, it's so important. We don't, yeah. It we, seems so logical. It's like yeah. so clear. If you can drink and not do anything bad, go drink. Right. Exactly. If, if exactly. you can smoke pot and not, not do anything bad to your fellow human, Go smoke pot, if that's what you want to do, if that's your adult decision, that's your choice. That, what does liberty mean if it, if, if it doesn't mean that? Well, people mean right. get into this ridiculous, just obey the law, why is it such a hard time, what are you, a druggie, you need drugs, get through this life. And I always say, this is such an illogical argument, because imagine if we were on an island, we were the only people on the planet, and there was only four of us. There's only four of us, and one of us wanted to smoke pot. And we said, no, we gotta lock this guy up in a fucking cage. He's crazy. And <laughs> we nice decided to reduce it to that, to, yeah. to four, then you really see the dynamic. You see how here. silly it is. Like, yeah, what? You would, you would just lock this guy up in a cage. You can't smoke pot. We made a law against it. Yeah. Like, what? And that four is just as ridiculous as four million or four hundred million or what? It's, it's just as ridiculous. It's an extraordinary thing, and, and you have to consider what it's led to in our society uh, in all kinds of ways. It's led to the creation of huge armed bureaucracies who have the right to break into our homes, smash down our doors, humiliate us in every possible way, ruin our lives uh, with, with, with criminal records. Uh, and all because what? We're, we're, we're smoking some nat natural herb, which, we, which, which affects our own consciousness in some way. So again, I say, if we get into the faces of others, the state may have a role to play. And it does, and it already has elaborate rules for dealing with that. But for the state to have transgressed consciousness of free sovereign adults is a grotesque abuse of human rights and it doesn't work this is the other thing if the state could turn around and say the war on drugs has worked we have reduced the consumption of this that it's not true they haven't reduced the consumption of any drugs the consumption of the all illegal drugs has gone up up and up and up and up and up let's take another drug tobacco you never got sent to jail for smoking tobacco you never got your life ruined or your front door broken down but some years ago, people cottoned on to the notion that tobacco actually may be making us pretty unwell if we're smoking a lot of tobacco. Uh, seems to be a connection with lung cancer. And this, was, uh, this information was put forward. Look what's happened with tobacco in the last 20 years. Millions, millions and millions of adults all over the world presented with that information have taken a personal sovereign decision to stop smoking cigarettes. I took that decision when I was 38 years old. I used to, I'm 61 now. I used to smoke 40 cigarettes a day. Wow. And uh, well, I was a journalist, you know, oh. <laughs> cigarette hanging out the mouth, typewriter. I, I, I was a heavy smoker, but I took the decision. I, I came to the conclusion this is not good for my body. You know, and Stephen I, King said that it was, a, it was a neurotransmitter and enhancer yeah. that he suffered when he stopped smoking. Well, so many sure. writers. Write. Like when you were a writer, why did you smoke so much as a writer? Uh, it helps. Yeah, yeah, it does. It definitely did. It definitely did help, uh, as, as does uh, marijuana. Um, but but uh, the fact is that uh, there is... What, the point that I want to make is that, is that if the state was really interested in helping us, this is how the war on drugs is presented, we're concerned about your health, so we're going to send you to prison. You know, we're concerned about the harm this drug is doing to you, so we're going to send you to prison. What's more harmful, the harm the drug is doing or being sent to prison? It seems to me pretty obvious that the being sent to prison is a much more harmful thing that's, uh, that, that's being done. If the state was really concerned about harm, then the solution is not to criminalize people for taking drugs. The solution is to present them with very good information which they believe. Part of the problem is that the state has become to be regarded as so corrupt that any message emanating from the state about drugs is not believed anymore, completely disbelieved. Um, so, so, you know, once again, we come to this issue of adult sovereignty 
uh, over, over consciousness. And our right also to make mistakes with our own body if we do that. That's what we, we, I believe we're here on this earth to learn and to grow and to develop. And we have to have adult responsibility to do that. It always astonishes me in America where you have the Republican Party, which is strongly in favor of individual freedoms, that it's often Republicans who are the ones who are most anti-drugs. Uh, I feel the drugs is a Republican issue. I, I think that any true Republican should absolutely champion the right of every adult individual, if they choose to do so, to explore their own consciousness uh, with any drugs they choose. Yeah, there's no real parties anymore. It's just a mix mash. I mean, Obama is just as much of a Republican as any Republican that's ever been in office. I've, I've seen this. I've seen this happening. It's weird but, assimilation. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is. It's just uh, your uh, fuck no matter what. It's, it's <laughs> either the same person. Basically, because really our society is being run by uh, gigantic faceless bureaucracies now. Mm. Uh, and those are much more dangerous than anything else because they don't even have a figurehead. They just continue. They roll on and they run and they run people's lives. But, but the, the, the aspect of society where powers that be are trying to control people's mental um, uh, territory. This is not a new thing. This no. has been going on for a very, very long been time. Going on for a very long time. The newest incarnation. We had witch burnings. Where the, exactly. It's a very it's, old. Exactly. I would say that that in our societies today, drug users play the same role as witches played in Europe in the 16th century. Absolutely. That's that's fundamentally what's going on. They're an internal enemy which the society can be mobilized to hate because that's what the state does. It makes people hate and fear and suspect other people because then they want to rely on the state for their defense and their protection. It's a game, it's a mind game, and it's been going on for a very long time, and it happens that the current victims are drug users. Um, and, and uh, you know, the word, the, it's interesting that language itself has been deployed in this war, so that you very rarely find the word drug separated from the word abuse, that you never find the notion of a responsible use of drugs. You find only the notion of abuse of drugs. Um, and, and so it's become impossible almost to speak about drugs without incorporating this, this notion that there's some abuse is taking place. Yeah, and the idea that you can actually benefit from them is an alien thought. Completely alien, yeah. very, very much hated by, by our society. Really and yet, it. you know, the research is coming through. We've had the research in the last year with psilocybin, uh, easing anxiety of ter terminal cancer patients, MDMA with... Um, with post-traumatic stress disorder, fan fantastically successful. And, ca and cancer, apparently. Have you seen that? Where they're saying that no. super doses of MDMA may, may treat cancer? Makes sense. I've, all I've, the joy and love that you feel yeah, just yeah, kills all the yeah. bad stuff. I know. I, I, mean, I, I mean, these, you know, these, these um, I believe that, well, Aldous Huxley called the psychedelics gratuitous graces. They're something that nation, nature just gave us for free, kind of grace, to, to allow us to ex experience uh, something else and and um didn't huxley coin the term psychedelic he's the one that came up quite with it. possibly yeah it was yeah. huxley and um i can't remember the other person i oh shit man yeah i think that they were they had different they were trying to come up with a word they had another word that they were going to use for it but it sounded too unscientific yeah so you're right you're right you're right yeah definitely psychedelic is the perfect word they nailed it they nailed it they, they nailed it yeah. Drugs, I'm not a big woohoo, let's take drugs type person. Drugs can be incredibly dangerous and negative. What I'm saying is making them illegal isn't working. It doesn't work. It doesn't prevent people from using drugs. I'm talking th about... It didn't prevent you. No, no, it made absolutely no difference. I think uh, no difference at all. I think Except we... presumably you lived in fear of, at some point, possibly running up against the door. It complicated the situation and it made it more difficult to approach the situation for what it is legitimately, a disease which requires therapy and, com and compassion, not to be pushed underground and controlled by illegal economies. So, yeah, John, in my particular case, what would have helped is regulation and therapy. I'm not talking about let's have a free-for-all, some crazy whacked out world where everyone's on drugs. I'm saying that drugs should be of uh, pharmaceutical quality, they should be controlled and prescribed and not part of a, a huge uh, sort of criminal... Okay, so to that end, you have a campaign which focuses on what? Caroline Lucas, the MP, the Green Party MP, has proposed that there's a full debate and investigation into UK drug policy. Along with Avaz, the online uh, campaigning website, we've got over 100,000 signatures. That's what's required for it to be debated in Parliament. The debate is already going to happen. You're asking them then, a whole lot of politicians, who you say young people shouldn't vote for, yeah. to determine what should happen to drug policy. 
Well, this could end up being a yet another example of why politics isn't representative, because we already know now that there's a mandate. We already know there's a consensus. We know that politicians know that drug laws aren't working. We know that the people of this country want reform around drug laws, and yet it hasn't changed. I well, think well that, do we? Do we? Has it yeah, really absolutely. been tested? Uh, yeah, I think so, mate. There's been pretty thorough like reports around it. Like 66% of Conservative voters, 69% of Labour voters, 61% of Daily Mail readers okay, want you... drug laws changed. So there's yeah a huge mandate. And this survey, mate, you know, like we got 100,000 signatures in like 24 hours. Yeah, but, I, I yeah, came on it. Yeah, yeah, but you're it, asking people. And to we don't sign... even need to promote yeah, it you're, anymore. You're, it you're, so quickly. You're, you're asking... I don't even need to be here. No, but you're asking people to sign up mm. to a petition. Yes that then MPs that you do not want them to vote for are going to have to debate. Yes, that's right. Well, how does that work? Because what I'm not interested in the power of politicians. I'm interested in the power of people. I'm interested in representing people. This does represent the views of people. 100,000 people in no time at all have signed this petition. But Russell, there's, they a, there's, it. there's a confusion here. There's not you confusion, John. You said don't John. vote to you. You said I, I Russell Brand, have never voted. I never right? will be. Yeah, John, I'm, but, but, I maintain but, but, this. But therefore, you're asking people you don't people want people to mm -hmm. vote for yes, that's right. to determine a change in the drug law. I'm de no, no, John, that's not what's happening. What I'm doing is I'm demonstrating consensus. I'm further demonstrating that these politicians are completely out of touch. They are irrelevant, but until the revolution, this is the system that we will be using. But in effect, you are actually doing the government's work for them, because the very people you're saying don't vote, young people, that's mm -hmm. who you were talking to specifically, yes, yes, right? Yes, Okay. That's the poor people, actually. No, no, those are the people, people those are the people who are suffering the cuts. They're the people, for example, whose educational maintenance grant, which made all the difference to going to school please, uh, for 16-year-olds, they're don't cutting do that. John, okay, my, now, my, if, the, if my these young man, people were voting... John, absolutely not. I refuse to be drawn on this subject. You know better than anybody that parliamentary democracy does not represent people. What they offer is piecemeal change. I'm saying people deserve more. If, if democracy was truly representative, then the one million people march against the Iraq war would have meant there wasn't an illegal war in Iraq. I think... There was an illegal war in Iraq. So don't tell me that politics works. I'm saying let's form consensus, no, not, not let's bring people you, together. I'm not telling you anything. Together. I'm not telling you anything. I'm, trying, I'm trying to strip down what telling Standing people... on the television. No, I'm trying to strip... Tell me before we're on. <laughs> and I'm, then... try, I'm trying to strip down what you are trying to tell people. On the one hand, you're saying don't vote. Yes. And on the other hand, you're saying sign up to this petition yeah. so those people for whom you will not vote will make a decision. Well, this is, John, this is going to be now a that process. That doesn't make any sense. Please, John, what is important? What doesn't make sense? Do you regret telling people no. not to vote? No. Stop, look, listen, you, let me talk. What doesn't make sense are the current laws around, dr around drugs in this country, which means people are unnecessarily dying and a disease is being stigmatised. Do you see this psychedelic place behind me? I wish what? it was psychedelic, John, because what? I think some ayahuasca might what? elevate their consciousness. What, Russell Brand, what is your... Give me a picture of what you would like to see. Just a tell me what... A truly representative well, doctor, democracy how would, would What would that look like? What it would look a lot like that, John. It would be a lovely psychedelic building. John, please, again, No, 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 but what do you want to see? John, how, how, would, you, how would decisions you, be made? Please let me ask you. Is there a distinction between pointing out that they're in, in one... I'm here to talk about the issue around yes. drugs. In countries like Portugal and Switzerland, where they have reformed their drug laws, people are not dying of this disease in such huge numbers. Crime is dropping. HIV infection is dropping. That's important. That's more important than you, an entertainer, getting me, another entertainer, to cook up a wacky version of politics so you can make me look a bit daft no, and no. passionate and I no, care. No, but it seems to me if you no, want mate. to demolish no, one mate. thing... No, I'm talking about... But yes. if you want to demolish one thing, surely you have to give a vision of what it is you'd actually like to yes, see in its yes. place. Yes, yes, and this will be a process. It will be a process, and it won't just come from me. I'm just... what I'm talking, I'm talking about a different situation that isn't about just different David Cameron or me or anyone turning up on the telly shouting their mouth off. There are very serious floods in this country sure. and a lot of people think it's about climate change but a lot of politicians yeah. don't think it's about climate change That's don't right. want to think it's about climate mm -hmm. change. So the question is do you believe in climate change? Do you think that's what's happening? I think the climate's changed, and I think there's a lot of evidence from scientists, and I think there's a lot of uh, work and effort going into suppressing that information so that energy companies can continue think, to operate the way they are. Do you think there's human involvement? In, 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 cli in of changing course. the climate? Yes, I do, actually. But, I mean, like, again, I'm not an expert on climate so, change, but Naomi Klein is, and she thinks it, and she believes in it, and that's, like, that's enough for me. And she's saying that nothing's going to happen around climate change and the way that we use energy on our planet unless people protest and unless people en masse get involved. 
like so like you in a way asking me to devise so all the solutions. In an odd sort of way, she's coming up with a different solution to the one that you're coming up with drugs. Drugs, you're talking about a petition to try and raise awareness and try and get yeah. a commitment. She's talking about actual direct action on the streets. And I think the direct action on the streets is probably the best way to get things changed in every area. However, it seems apposite. But you actually use the example of the Iraq war, it had no effect at all. Right, yeah, that, that's true, John. So obviously these protests need to become more vehement, more active, more direct. They need to change, they need to evolve. But the, the options aren't, let's do something or let's, let, let's do nothing. In, in your journey from drug addiction, have you concluded in the end that you're a revolutionary? <laughs> no, no, it's a fair question. Do you want a revolution? You know I do. You know I do. That's the reason that I'm here. First of all, I want a revolution in the way that we regard addiction as a disease, the way we legislate it, the way we treat drug addicts. But further than that, I want to address global inequality around economics and we need to find some suitable ecological solutions around energy. Russell Brand, thank you for talking to us. See you after the break, John. <laughs>